Moving on to the next keynote, we have the co-founder of the Foundation of Digital Creativity. She, her name is Claire. She is uh, working on educating adults and children in the field of computers, electronics, and Internet of Things. Her talk is going to be about empowering communities and how to scale up LoRaWAN. Please big up, give a round of applause for Claire. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for the warm welcome. Thanks to Vinka for inviting me to talk about the foundation and the work that we're doing actually with adults and with children um, in formal education and in informal education. So this morning is very much about maybe not the work that we're doing with commercial companies because there is so much knowledge in the room about that. So I've, I've really stripped down the presentation to take out the experiences that are already in the room. So I'm going to be talking about people, um, but first of all, a little bit about the foundation. We're new. So we launched um, in September last year. There's two of us, Andrew and I, have worked together for a couple of years. We're part of the Raspberry Pi community, Raspberry Jam community. We're putting the cutting edge infrastructure into communities. So in the last couple of years, we worked on a project called Connected Hull, which was funded by Hull City Council. But now we're working across the north of England, so we link into Things North. If we've got Things Communities, and let me go from east to west, if we've got communities in Hull, in Leeds, in Bradford, I'm going across, if anybody knows it, a motorway called the M62, we get to Manchester, eventually we land up in, um, in Liverpool, then we get together, we've got our own communities, but actually we can, we can learn so much together as well. Um, so we're part of Things North now, and that means for me, when I'm working with communities, I'm working across many different cities, I'm really trying to support and add value to different communities. Within a Things Network community, I'm working with different diverse communities of people, and that's really why I'm here to talk this morning. So the focus is on education, education of adults and children, and we're very much working with partnerships. So universities, I work with two universities in Leeds. One is um, an interesting project looking at um, the impact of air quality or the impact of arts education. So if we think about STEM to STEAM, I'm going to use Laura. We're going to um, collect air quality. We're going to have children and communities as change makers, but they're going to visualize the results within visual arts. What's the impact on well-being of either of those components? So that's something that I'm starting to work on now. I also work with Leeds University, and that's really looking at validating our data for air quality. Other partnerships will be councils, um, libraries. Basically, I talk, I get everybody together. That's what we do, all right? So, democratizing um, access to everybody through Things Network. Do you know there are two ways that we can do this? I can either explain what the Internet of Things is, what the Things Network is, what people can do with data, data-driven decisions and I can introduce people to um, widgets, to devices, software tools, and they can, they can buy in consultancy from us. And um, we can tweak those devices off the shelf so that it solves their problem. Or we can educate them, and we can give them the tools. Now, we're a foundation, so we go for option B there. And if we go for education, and it's also for commercial organizations as well, then what can we do with education? We need to remove the barriers. Now, we've got previous with this. We've done it before. There was a lovely, lovely phrase from Johan yesterday about Raspberry Pi being unsuitable for scale, and it's quite right. Okay, that was when I got over the shock of, how dare you say that? This is the love of my geek life. But, it, but, but we can't scale it. So, We've used PyFace before as an entry level to Raspberry Pi. We use something called Codebook, which is a wearable, so we can educate people with, with programming. So we use all of that knowledge that we've done before, and we can use Raspberry Pi, and we can have a new PyFace with a LoRa chip on there, 
and we can put an EnviroSense sense board on top of that. And if we tweak the software, so we use Google Blockly, straight away we've got everybody using the equipment to access Things Network, democratizing access. Solve your own problems, very much looking at building up digital skills. Um, so code your own project and solve your own pro um, problems. We do that with businesses. And some will still come back to us and say, actually, can you do that consultancy? But the choice is there. So I'm going to talk about some people now. I'm going to talk about maybe this group from Leeds Libraries. Um, they came along, did a workshop, and started to solve their own problems. Um, Maybe this is um, a particularly different group um, than the people that you support within your communities. This is part of 100% um, digital, citywide digital strategy in, in Leeds. And some of these people in here are involved in a, get people online for the first time, literally um, bridging that digital divide, accessing council services. They came along and um, they started to understand the Things Network. The feedback was incredible. Um, so we had one particular lady, and I know that it's not going to be clear right at the front, we had a 73-year-old who, when we gave her the tools and she understood it, she said she was going to go away, she was going to get in touch with family members about getting kits set up to share data. And like, where does that fit into Lawrence's framework of building communities? Is she talking like a rock star? Um, we go back to... Connected Hull. It was such a good project because it was funded and we had 12 months to make an impact, 12 months to um, educate people to realise how they can change their own worlds. So we had to give them real life scenarios. We had to work with the digital communities, we had to work with um, digital groups, incubators, I worked with schools. This is an image taken from Hull Raspberry Jam. Um, and sometimes people say it's easier to work with children because actually they will educate adults as well and it can be the other way around, but we've got that whole internet, um, intergenerational groups. So we did lots of different projects in Hull and really, why ought we be using the Things Network? What can it do for me? What do I want to do with data-driven um, decision-making? Well, everybody likes car racing. So we have a car race in Hull, so we've got groups of engineers, that build their own car, and they race. And if we introduce telemetry, they couldn't do that before. We take a gateway. And we're not just improving attainment here, we're improving driver efficiency. And we're improving um, driver performance, car performance. And this is what we took to Hull. There is a massive difference between telemetry used in Formula One and telemetry used in Hull because the range of skills in Hull is much wider. These are our engineers, the 9, 10 and 11. Lewis Hamilton doesn't build his own car. He doesn't code his own projects for telemetry. Maybe he does analyze the data. This group of engineers did the whole lot. What, what can we do with that information? Let's listen to what they said about the telemetry project. It's, it's, it's two minutes, but then we'll have an insight from them and from, from their teacher. Of course, this is a one and a half hour race. So whoever started near the back has loads of time to make their way up the grid and claim their rightful place on the podium. Project Blythe, run by the Green Power Education Trust, offers young people the thrills and spills of the racetrack, but only after they've successfully built their own single-seater IET Formula 24 kit cars. Connected Hull has been following the progress of Francis Askew Primary School's car, competing in the IET Formula Goblin class for 9 to 11 year olds. Here's Dylan, one of the team's drivers. Tell me how it feels when you're actually sitting in the driver's seat and you're whizzing down the field like that. How does that feel? Scary, because you might fall out. <laughs> <laughs> how fast do you think you're going? I don't know, but I think, well, I said it's about, I think it's about 10, 15, 16 miles per hour. So if you had a sensor on the car that could tell you how fast you were going, 
How exciting would that be? It'd be good, it would be good, so then we can show you the school that we, that how fast we was going. Uh-huh. Would knowing that sort of information help you to be a better driver? It might, yeah, so you can improve on it every time you see it. Mr Allen, teacher at the school and racing team manager, told me what the children have learned by taking part. Well, they've, uh, they've learned how to use hand tools. Uh, we've been using spanners and Allen keys and all sorts of other bits and bobs. Um, they've learned how to follow instructions and, and, and assemble a kit. Um, they've learned how to, how to do things with precision because that's important for the, uh, for, for the vehicle. And we're, we're looking at ways of, of involving technology in that. Andrew, project manager for Connected Hull, explained how useful data is being collected from the Francis Askew car. So yes, so the um, technology we're using is based on LoRaWAN, which is a long-range radio um, sensor. It's low power, so really one way to think about it is almost like sending text messages for free. So you can send it over 16 kilometres and just send short bits of data. In this application, we're using it to get information about what the car's doing. So that way, like in Formula One and other professional racing series, um, we can find out the performance of the car and then use that to learn from it and develop new um, techniques and improve the car for, for future Runs. Mr Allen was keen to add to the sensor wish list, explaining a little more about why the collection of data is so important to the team. Um, putting some temperature sensors on the brakes, um, some speed sensors, maybe even something that could measure uh, vibration and, and other information like that so that we could look at that um, for example the vibration and look at ways of reducing that to make a smoother ride so that we can use the uh, information that we gather to influence how to improve the, the design and, and the, um, anything that we can do to streamline that. Um, and then uh, by attaching those to something like Raspberry Pi we can beam that back, we can record it, we can graph it um, and then we can look at all of the ways that that ties into um, ICT curriculum, maths and, and that kind of thing and design technology of course. Are you going to win today? A lot of, uh, a lot of teams have been um, drafting in engineers from other, other companies to build theirs. I'm proud to say that ours have been built by uh, a team of uh, four, uh, year four to year six children uh, exclusively. Uh, every nut and bolt, every screw has been uh, put in by them. Wherever we come today, we can hold our heads high and be proud that we did it all ourselves. They did it all themselves. It looked like it was going to fall apart, but they did it themselves. There's, there are many threads in there. So, so why did we do it? Siemens were connected to that race. They sponsor it. I went to see the plant director at Siemens in Hull and talking to him about um, Laura One. So it's a really good entry when you, when you hear what the kids are talking about and then you hear them going home and then you hear Dylan, the teacher, talking about Laura One and what they can do with it. And then we've got the digital community as well. Then it's not just a car race. We're actually building up the, um, the value of the community through a different communication model. We go back to Siemens and in Hull last year, it was the UK city of culture. We'll have many more of those because we're not going to have a European city of culture anymore. Um, but in Hull, in January, in the dead of night, one of the um, wind turbines, the blades, came from the Siemens factory into the centre of Hull. And this is it. And this was, the, this, this was the launch. This was the art and cultural piece that came into the city. What has that got to do with art and culture? That was a massive question last January. But Blade came in and it was, it was put in the equivalent of Dam Square and it was huge. But in Hull, we'd get buses going underneath and people wanted to touch it and, and people kind of started to talk about um, Blade as gender. Isn't she great? Isn't he brilliant? What is it? And people became really attached. The plant director said, why don't you do something with Blade? What can you do? Do you know you have one of those moments when you sat with a plant director and you say, well, can we hack Blade? Can we put GPS tracking on? Can we use it as a real life scenario? And, and can we kind of communicate big asset tracking? You know, you just get opportunities sometimes because there's no way on earth that Siemens would let me into the um, factory and let me track stuff and offshore. But you could start to see through the conversations that they could see um, the opportunities available for them, particularly for offshore as well with Laura. So what we did when Blade went back to the factory in March, we, we hacked it. We got the Raspberry Jam community, they put a little time lapse together, we got the kids working on that, and we, um, we're being recorded, aren't we? We got some sensors, um, 
What I want to say is that we, um, we just hoovered up whatever was on the office floor and we just put it on, um, on a Raspberry Pi, um, we put it on Blade, and it, it took off on its journey. But again, you know, I'll show you this. Um, this was done by um, 10, a 12, and a 14 year old um, at Hall Raspberry Jam. They coded it. We don't put images through LoRaWAN, but actually it's a really good communication tool to, to talk to the wider digital community about large asset tracking. Um, so this is Blade as Blade, because we all grew to love him and her. Um, and, and this was Blade going back to the factory. As I said, we collected data, we collected anything really. Um, temperature, um, humidity, sound. Um, we've got the project manager walking in front of Blade. I don't think we managed to catch any foxes. There were foxes um, following it when, it when it went into the main square, first of all. But we put GPS on so that, I mean, it's massive, you couldn't miss it, but people could track it remotely and that would trigger more conversations. So here it is, it goes back to the factory. It's not going to be seen again. The people in Hull know, because they saw, they, they saw Blade, and they start to get a little bit more understanding, really, about what Laura Wang can do as well. Um, we give that a second, it goes to daylight. And then blades reunited with the other wind turbines. And actually, because people fell so in love with it, it it's going to be um, an art installation forever now. It's not going to go back to work. We collected a whole heap of data when Blade went back to the factory. And we start to think about communities having that understanding, data-driven decision-making. We could give them the CSV file. But actually what we did, we did an algo rave. We didn't talk, I, I couldn't call it an algo rave because it was council funded. Um, if anybody knows Sam Aaron and uses Sonic Pi, then you'll understand what I'm talking about. But we had, um, we, we transformed, we transferred the, um, the, the code from the data into code into music using Sonic Pi and Sam live coded that. It's open source. It's always going to be on a Pi. You can download it onto a Mac, onto Windows. If you don't know about it, check it out, because it's absolutely awesome. Um, and version 3, which we tried out for the first time in Hull, meant that Sam was live coding with, with live data. So whatever we had across um, the estate of, of connected Hull at that time, Sam was live coding. It was just brilliant. Um, so that's how we started to visualize using sonification how does my data sound? What kind of interpretations can I get? It's another talking point. It's just the best job that I do. Um, so this is, back in, this is back in Leeds, and again, if you haven't, oh gosh, the, the W's missed off. Um, there's a project called the Ada Show, and this is Kathy next to me in the dress, which is driven by 7,000 LEDs, driven by a MacBook at the back. She does a performance. She's dressed as Ada Lovelace. Um, and we do workshops alongside that. So the foundation sponsors the Ada Show. We'll have another one next month, this, this month actually. Um, and you look at the dress, and she's got so many power packs under there. You know, it's something that you can't ask a lady what's, what's under the dress, but she's literally, she's... she's She's got a MacBook in her underwear, and there's just, oh, it's just. Um, but the, I'm going to say the conversations that, that are a catalyst from that, we start talking about the data. You know, this is Ada Lovelace, it was the first algorithm. We inspire children, we inspire, we inspire adults. But what if the dress was driven by data? What could we do with that? So some of our workshops were following on from the performance of the Ada show um, to use Laura and to start collecting data. So we want people, we want communities to code a project, collect the data, analyze the data, and, and report back on what they've done. So this is one way, this is, this is one partner. Again, it's just something different that I thought I'd throw in. Couple of slides of projects. So, the new portal that we're going to use is going to be called Invent Things, and we get people to invent things. Um, what have we got here? 
On the left-hand side, we've got a group of students in Hull who invented a UV tracker. So you never listen to, to your parents about when to slip, slap, slop with sun cream. That's what my daughter says to me. Um, so the kids invented um, the, the, their own mechanism for um, supporting peers through the sun's harmful rays. We've got another project in um, Huddersfield, which is Huddersfield Girl Geeks. So again, I do get asked to support particular communities if we're looking at increasing participation of girls in computing. Um, and we do use Pi, we use Pi Face, but sometimes actually we go to post-it notes. Um, so any developments, we'll, we'll have a look at some of the inventions there. And then invent things, talk about, there's two of, there's, there's two of us in the foundation. Um, there's myself and there's Andrew, so Andrew's top right. Um, I started, established the Raspberry Jam communities in, in Hull and in Leeds. Andrew is very much involved in the Manchester one, which, is, which was the first Raspberry Jam. Um, so just before Christmas, we've got this little cutie here who's six. She came with her mum. She set up the Raspberry Pi. She said what colour she wanted a lantern, but it was just a, it was a, it was an introduction so that she could use EnviroSense, um, and she was driving the lantern by temperature data. She could take that EnviroSense and she could put it onto the Pi and it would go to Things Network. And this is beside, um, behind the scenes. So what are we doing? Talking about Pi based. I don't always use Things Network. If I'm working in a school, I'll, I'll go with Wi-Fi. So anything coming from the Pi will go straight to the Invent Things website. People can use Java, people can use Python. If I want entry level, then we've done the development with, with Blockly. So that's the magic behind it. And removing barriers. People tell me that code is really scary. We start with this. What's the problem to solve, actually? We, we start with the problem. What is the problem to solve? I want to make the air around me cleaner. I want to impact on my own health that way. How do I do that? I want to drag in a particular block. How long am I going to measure it for? And everything else that you know. So what's next? I kind of said why, why we're doing what we're doing. Um, how are we doing it? And what are we doing? The Internet of Things is um, it's unsecure, um, security risks, um, the robots are coming, it's really dangerous. One thing, we had to look at language. We were talking when, um, when I'm working with, with teachers, with educators, with communities, then just putting that extra word into the Internet of Things, making it the Internet of Curious Things was kind of, do you know we can use our imagination? This is about creatively solving problems. And that's made a big difference into actually getting people to come into libraries um, and to do a workshop for the first time. Then they go away and hopefully change their own world. Um, in the UK this year, it's the year of engineering. So we've got funding from the Institute of Engineering and Technology, MechEng as well, and we're going to roll out this program to schools um, in Lancashire um, and in Yorkshire in the next couple of months. Some of you may have seen that last week um, we got our funding through from the lottery, which means that our um, Sense and Sensibility um, project is going to roll out um, looking at air quality in an area of test bed in Leeds. And then we really want to expand that. Um, so starting this month, the end of this month, we'll have um, the air quality EnviroSense. We're going into a particular community to say, how are you going to change your environment? Identify the problem. So if I'm working in the school, one of the projects will be, we put this on the school gate and we monitor the level and then we make a change, we change behaviour. So we kind of ban cars at drop off time and pick up time maybe, or we have the scooter to school week and then we can evaluate the impact of that. Um, so I'm really excited about, about that big lottery funding because it means um, that we can start those projects. And actually, when I'm talking to stakeholders, um, there's so much interest in that now because we've got children as, as change makers. Um, it's funny, really, isn't it, that some of the other stakeholders start to get exciting once the funding's in there as well. So I can see that that's really going to roll. Um, now then, what's, what's, what's the beauty? How can something so beautiful communicate something so deadly? So I'm working with an emerging artist who is definitely super cool. 
So I'm going to work with Liz and do some visual arts through her quality. And again, we want, we want to um, educate people and to get people exploring about data. So we're going to visualize wearables, textiles, and you'll see more coming out from that as well. Um, I work with Wigan Steam, so they're a partner. They do some fabulous stuff across the Pennines. Um, so in a couple of weeks, we're going to do Envara Youth Hack. That's their project. I'm going to be working with them and delivering their, their um, workshops. Bottom right, um, so this Thursday and Friday, I'm going to be back in the UK, I'm going to be in Derbyshire, I'm going to be working in a castle with this group of girls. So this is This Girl Codes. We've got the final two sessions, we're going to be looking at data, we're going to be looking at fairly standalone stuff. Um, and then over the next couple of months, there's more funding that we can um, increase those sessions and include Laura. So look out for This Girl Codes in a castle. Um, and then finally, um, some of you will be aware of the play boxes, the shipping containers in, in Leeds, um, an organisation called another community interest company called um, Playful Leeds, who just want a gateway on the shipping container. They want to do things with data with communities, and it looks like the time is right to start working with them. That's a whistle stop. It is talking about people. It's talking about how we support them. Adding value to that community. There's a huge range there of somebody from six to 73. Educators, informal education. If it's accessible, we know that we can increase awareness and participation. We can start to get people working together to understand data. One of the things that we do maybe, maybe really well is that we work, Andrew and I, through the community interest company. We're in Leeds and Manchester, so we've got the Pennines between us. We've got this huge range of hills between us. Which one is better? I live in Yorkshire, he lives in Lancashire. It goes back to the War of the Roses, so there's, there's really big competition. Okay? I'm actually from Yorkshire. No, no, I live in Yorkshire. I married a Yorkshireman. We had to get married in London. It was that bad. We had to get new paperwork. Um, but, but, but we prove which one is better now through data, and we get communities involved. So there's lots and lots of banter that way. It's just a, a different access point, really. But we're still using that infrastructure. So the message that I'd like you to take away is, you know, you know what we do as a foundation. We're educating adults and children. We are not diluting things network. We're giving access, but then actually the, the tools that we're using, you would all use them. You'd use PyFace, you'd use Python, you'd use Java, you'd use the tools that you use now. We've added extra tools so that anybody can access and leverage the power of Things Network. And that's me if you want to get in touch. Thank you. This was fantastic and such an inspiration for, I think, all of us here. Uh, I wanted to know this uh, personally as well. Uh, a lot of times when we are involved in this whole community building process, uh, we do get a lot of questions uh, from initiators and other members. How do you involve uh, young students or adults uh, in this community? Normally, it's a pre-notion that, oh, you need to involve hackers, nerds, or all these people. But how do you involve uh, young people uh, to be part of the community? Um, so young people through maybe Raspberry Jam community, through schools, we use young people to get to adults, um, like everybody else does. You know, we've, we've got a clear, um, cleaner consultation in Leeds at the moment, and there's lots of work being done in schools mm -hmm. to, um, to reach out to adults as well. Partners, so we'll partner with Univer. I'll talk to anybody. Yeah. So, so, so everybody has um, got something to gain from what we're doing, so if it's universities, if it's libraries, if it's other community groups, and quite a lot of partnership with other community interest companies, other not-for-profits. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, talking and partnering and expanding that. Well, excellent. I really hope that we can have more diverse uh, people as part of a community. Uh, anyone else from the audience who wants to ask a question to Claire? And, oh, one sec. Could you please introduce yourself? Hi, Claire. Um, <coughs> so my name is Rick Timmis. I'm from Exeter in Devon. And um, 
would you guys be interested in some kind of community partnering? I do a lot of work with the Pie Jam and the Make Space down there, and we'd be really interested in drawing some of your ideas and kicking them off down there in the southwest. Absolutely. So, because it's expanding the community, everything's open source. Um, as soon as we can introduce you to Invent Things, the portal, um, obviously the data goes up to Things Network, but if we've got um, Invent Things as the portal as well, we want other people to be using that. Um, so, yeah, definitely get in touch. Uh, hi, Claire. My name is Frederik Zwa from All Things Talk. Um, we're working in Belgium on similar stuff as you do. We had Iotopia, which was uh, a, a challenge contest for schools uh, for uh, uh, 14 to 18 years old. Um, what I very much liked in your presentation was that you work in libraries. Uh, we have the idea, because a library is looking to, to be sustainable in the future, to change the library instead of lending out books, lending out IoT kits for them. Do you have, exp or already had that idea, or, or have experience? Because the library staff is not Technically, and if somebody lends something out and breaks it, yeah, we still are thinking about how we can solve this. Have you had the same idea to lend out devices in a library? So, going back to that dress yeah. with Ada Lovelace, the other two ladies either side were digital librarians. So I spent lots of time with the digital librarian team. Um, there's one particular library not far from us in Huddersfield that started um, loaning out microbit, um, so loaning out kits like that. Um, it would be great to loan out um, kit for LoRaWAN projects. But how would we do that? How would we manage it? What about um, connectivity and, and the gateways? Um, but we can do it because the lottery funding actually, um, we've just put another bid together and, and said, do you know what? Let's put 120 projects into the community. If we're going to talk about communities as change makers, you fund it so that we can have 120 projects where communities want them, and that will be the equivalent of loan kit. Um, and again, the democratization of it all is that at the moment with air quality, the council say where they want the sensors because that's where they need them, the university say where they want them, but we're very much through loan kits, let the communities, empower the communities to do that. And if we have got a 73 year old or a seven year old who's collecting air quality data, then I'm pretty sure that every one of you in this room will use that data if it's been validated as well. Um, so yeah, the push it out to the community. Okay. Any other question? All right, uh, thanks a lot, Claire, for Thank sharing you. your inputs and looking forward to. Thank you.